say nice kid, but the boy's about as sharp as a bowling ball. Yep, that's your host, John Dayton. Welcome to the Smart to Noise Ratio Pro Audio Podcast. I am your host, and I am here by myself this week, and I'll explain that opening line here in just a second. Uh, by way of that explanation, it's summer. It's festival season. Guys are out with their PAs, out on uh, outdoor stages, under tents, carnivals, beer tents, municipal stages, street festivals, all kinds of stuff's going on outside. It's a great time to have a mobile PA, uh, unless it pours rain, and you also have a bunch of other stuff going on. So um, being that it's just me here, uh, this might be a short one. I'm going to ramble on just a little bit and uh, tell you a couple of quick stories about what's been going on here and cover a couple other brief topics. Get my notes out here. <clears throat> yeah, excuse that. Don't have a cough drop on hand. All right, so... Uh, today was one of those odd days where I went and got myself triple booked and somehow had it work out. So, uh, to start things off, uh, I met my partner, Gordon, uh, this morning. We hit the site bright and early, 7.30 a.m. We rolled in with a pair of trailers. The, uh, there's a group of, uh, musicians in town that, uh, throw this thing called a ramble every summer. It's basically just a little music festival that, uh, it's a bunch of hippies and maybe some country western types and some blues types and uh, even some jazzy types show up and uh, they just make music all day. There's a, an electric stage and a, a smaller acoustic stage and they just wail away. They get about, oh shucks, 40 acts, almost 40 acts on uh, those two stages in the course of a day. And uh, we do it every year. This is the seventh year. Uh, one or the other of us or both of us have supported it uh five out of the, the last seven years, <clears throat> and uh, it's kind of our uh, our donation to the, the public good. Uh, we, we do do a lot of charity events and other things, but uh, we seldom work for reduced rates because once you do that, everybody finds out you're the, the guy that does it for cheap, and then everybody's your buddy, or it's a church, or it's a charity, or they don't have much money, and it's such a good event. So uh, th this is the one time we cut somebody a little slack. And uh, we do this one for next to nothing because, uh, one, it's usually a pretty good time. And, uh, two, you know, you got to give back sometime. So that was the first gig. And uh, we're going to come back to that because <laughs> it's, uh, it's a heck of a story. I may uh, see if I can locate a radar map from this morning and, and show you what happened to us. Second gig, uh, I had to pull off of that one about 3 o'clock and head into work because I'm the sound guy at a church. And we have a Saturday night service. So I, I rolled in up here. We ran through a pre-service rehearsal, got everything ship shape, got our, our video operators all queued up, lined up, lighting cues all in order, ran the service, it went great guns, and uh, now I've got just a, a lull here where uh, I'm going to get this podcast in the can and possibly write a post or two for next week, and then about uh, 10.30 I'm going to head out and meet up with another sound guy from our group who is, uh, he's out doing a, a solo gig tonight and uh, was asking for some help getting his stuff struck at the end. So uh, and it's cool for a, for a bar gig to be absolutely positively done by 11. Uh, two guys wail away at the strike. You can be driving away at the stroke of midnight, which is pretty cool. So uh, going back to the ramble, we uh, it's always the risk with outdoor events in the summer that you're going to catch some weather. And, you know, there's really only so much you can do. I mean, everybody buys these little pop-up tents and you got your tarps and your plastic and you know you keep things in cases as best you can and uh you know you just uh you, you take what precautions you can but when things you know that's it's really only good for a sprinkle when things really start howling and blowing uh it doesn't matter if you're out with a pair of pole speakers or a stadium rig it gets scary pretty quick things start to tip over water starts blowing in sideways where you really only had protection to keep it from coming straight down onto things so uh, anyway, we rolled in. We were just about set up. Uh, we had sound coming out of a couple of things. We were starting to work through some issues with the monitors, and we were expecting the possibility, of the uh, yeah, the probability of thunderstorms to keep increasing. It was about 10 percent starting at eight in the morning. By the time you got out to dinner time, it was looking like 40 or 50 percent chance, which is still pretty good odds. I mean, we've we've done outdoor events on worse odds than that and come away unscathed. But, uh, you know, we did our last consult of the uh, the iPhones and took a look at the weather before we got going. And it was a muggy day and we had a lot to do. So we just put our heads down and went to work. So just as we're starting to make noise come out on the main stage, one of the uh, guys involved with the promotion of the event, one of the guys running it shows up and says, well, boys, they're calling for weather and a lot sooner. 
and we said, oh, and then the sky opened. Uh, this front was moving through at 45 miles an hour, and winds were recorded in excess of 70 miles an hour uh, various places around. Uh, uh, trees th with three-foot uh, diameter trunks were getting blown over. Um, the only thing that saved us uh, was not the tents because they <laughs> – <laughs> did what cheap tents from Walmart do. They they folded, they leaked, they let water just blow everywhere. Um, but uh, but the, both of the venues, I actually had some gear deployed at the, the acoustic stage. Both venues were protected on all sides by three uh, two- and three-story brick buildings. So uh, we were getting some horizontal rain, but the winds were sort of uh, mediated a little bit by the buildings that were around us. Uh, so that was exciting. <laughs> was, you know, in, you know, it just the skies just opened. The rain was coming at us sideways. Thunder, very close lightning strikes, and uh, we just said, "All right, we're going to cover our stages." So I ran to mine, and uh, Gordon and another guy took care of his. And, uh, you know, within five minutes, we had everything either, you know, put under cover or tarped up as best we could, and we're just sort of hanging on for dear life. And uh, there's really nothing to do. I mean, we, we could have been mad. We could have screamed at somebody for not telling us there was weather coming. But what are you going to do? You just you got to laugh and <laughs> say, you know what, boys, this time tomorrow, this is going to be a heck of a good story. Uh, unfortunately, nothing much uh, got damaged. Uh, uh, my little stage, I, mean, I, I had only just laid the gear out. So we just grabbed it quick, shot it inside a nearby building. And uh, apart from you know a couple of cases getting a few drops on them, we really made it off uh, unscathed. Gordon stage, however, um, it was about a 12 by 20 raised deck, uh, pretty nicely built, but uh, the tent over top of it, the, the bottom, lower edges of it, the peak went up higher, but the edges of it were about 10 feet up, and it was exactly the same size as the stage. Uh, what really would have been useful is if it had been like maybe two or three feet larger than the stage in all directions, uh, not that it would have kept you know some water from blowing in. But uh, there were just torrents of water collecting on top of this tent, running down, and, you know, no gutters or anything. It's just a tent. So this, these cascades of water were getting blown. I mean, center stage was as wet as the parking lot. It was just a mess. And uh, I think about the only thing that really suffered was um, he had a power snake out on the stage to provide uh, juice for the musicians. And uh, that was just soaked. I mean, there's water running out the backs of the boxes. So uh, at that point, we really didn't know what to do. I mean, we were going to, you know, what do you do? A, a previous year, um, we'd had weather roll in just as we were getting started to set up. So we, we hit up the, the biggest bar in town. The promoters went over and, you know, it was a, a bar, bowling alley, restaurant, big deck out back undercover. And they said, hey, uh, can we play? And they said, sure. They hired on more wait staff, called everybody in, in to work. And we, uh, we shoehorned it in there and had a grand old time. So we were starting to say, you know, well, you know, we can get the acoustic stage over there, lickety split. We can actually start that stage on time. And uh, Gordon, fortunately, had both his trailers with him. So um, I guess the idea was, you know, the, the bar rig was still in a trailer and dry. Uh, we we're going to send one guy over or two guys over, one to do each stage inside the bar and have two other guys strike the wet stuff. Um, but the promoters, uh, they pulled a gutsy move. They said, you know, if we go inside and it turns out to be wonderful, we're going to be really sorry. So, you know, everybody's phones came out. Everybody's making calls. Everybody's listening to the radio. Man, there's, there's more rain coming across the lake. We're right, uh, right near Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. And, was, and uh, in the summer, thunderstorms just, you know, what looks like, a, you know, just a little pleasant rain while it's over on the other bank over in Canada. It gets over that water and when it's warm and it'll just roll up these massive thunderheads that slam into us out here. And we're, we're an hour away from the lake where we were. So uh, the, the fury of it really has a chance to build. Um, so it was a gutsy move to stay outside, and it paid off. Uh, they got another sprinkle, but apart from that, that first big blast, they really uh, – that was about it. Um, but it was just terrifying. I mean, you're out there. You don't, you don't want to even just be outside with yourself. You don't have to worry about your, your wallet and your phone getting soaked and, and trying to come up with dry socks and a sweatshirt or something like that. But you know, to have 40, 50, 60 or more thousand dollars worth of PA deployed and run into that kind of weather and just have water going everywhere is, uh, it's pretty much sickening. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, so I'll have to say this. Uh, the, the moral of the story is uh, there, was, there was one other little caveat to this, and it's about safety, which we try to go into once in a while. had a post just this last week about uh, ground lifts, and this sort of, 
sort of plays into it. Uh, my stage, the, the power supply for the whole ball of wax was one 50-foot extension cord provided by a nearby business owner. And when the rain came, he opened his door to us, and we, we went piling inside there. And uh, the guy that was helping me with my stage went in there and noticed that uh, there was no ground pin on this extension cord. So we balled that thing up and threw it in a corner and, and did the right thing when we set up again after that. So they would, uh, you know, at least be grounding protection for the musicians. Um, with no plans to run if there was a drop of moisture. I mean, if there was a drop of moisture, we were just going to bag everything, pull the power, and, and wait it out. But over on the main stage, um, right behind the stage, there's a, actually a pretty nice distro. Uh, the city has pulled in a 150-amp power supply, so there's a nice weatherproof uh, breaker board in there and six GFI, GFCI outlets. And then also they had added for when larger acts come in, like the city has little concerts in there week to week, but when larger acts come in, they're looking for that that 50-amp range outlet so they can plug in their own distro and, and go to town. Um, so very thoughtfully, you know, a couple, couple of people had requested to the city that they add this thing, and it was only going to cost them a few bucks, so they put it on for us. Um, and it was on a 50-amp double-pole GFI breaker. So as soon as we rolled in our distro, Gordon's distro, plugged in uh, his jumper, and we heard it pop immediately. And there were no breakers on in our box. So we went over, and we checked this, and we checked that. And, you know, the breaker would stay on if nothing was plugged in. The breaker would stay on if the jumper was plugged in. The breaker would not stay on as soon as you connected it to the distro. So uh, we went back to the bad old days. Out comes the box full of every size, shape, flavor, and style of breaker available to man and some that aren't available to man. We do carry a few vintage models not available to the general public anymore. Um, and we start going through. And I'm like, all right, well, I got a, I got a Siemens <laughs> QP here, whatever it was. I forget exactly, a QR, whatever. Uh, just a plain Jane double pole 50. And I started to take the cover off the panel. I'm going, man... I don't want to do this. Uh, and this was before it had rained. I'm like, you know, there's a chance of thunder. There might be some rain coming in, even if it's not much. You know, if, if one of these guys coming in with his vintage amp with no ground, uh, you know, even if all it means is he, you know, because of the way things are wired, gets a blast of phantom power in the teeth, that's still, you know, what if a guy's got a pacemaker? What if it messes him up? And uh, God forbid something more serious should happen, that somebody gets a real shock or, you know, winds up unconscious or even dead. You do not want to be the person who has assumed liability for that condition. Um, you know, I said so, said as much in my article about ground lifts that uh, they're just not legal. You can't you can't use them. The purpose of them to go back a little bit. The purpose of a ground lifter, those little gray devices that you plug a three prong outlet in one side and then it lets you plug into a two prong outlet. They have a feature on them in, in the form of a little tab or a little wire that allows you to connect it to the screw that holds the plate on. That screw is then bonded through the body of the, the plug to the box. And if wired correctly, which you don't know if it is or not, but it should be connected to earth ground. And that's, that's what keeps stray current out of your guitar player and or audience member or stage manager or whoever has an unfortunate event keeps the electricity out of them and sends it harmlessly to earth. Um, lifting that ground can cause some ground loop issues to go away from audio systems, but it's just, one, it's not safe to do, and two, it's just illegal. And uh, anybody that wants to argue be with me about that, I will gladly fight you, and I, I, we won't argue at all. I will just smack you because uh, you're a fool. You're foolish to, to plug those things in to solve buzz issues. And I used to be an electrician at a hospital, so I know all about poor grounding conditions. And also, I like smacking fools. So if you want to come up to me and argue about that, um, I would be happy to smack you around, straighten you out on that. So it was in that same line of thinking, like, all right, here we have a device. It's provided for safety. It's provided to, if a, a wet condition happens out on a branch circuit somewhere, it senses that within a very small number of milliseconds, or I don't know if it's even microseconds. It's darn fast and uh, responds to that condition and, and cuts off the power. Bit of a hassle if that shuts down all of your sound and lights for the day, but I would much rather go through a bit of a hassle than have to explain why I killed somebody's relative, you know, spouse, father, grandfather, brother, whoever, on stage uh, because I did something foolish. So I held this breaker in my hand, said all that to say this. <laughs> um, you know, I held this, this non-GFCI breaker in my hand, and I'm looking at the panel, and I man, it would be the easiest thing to just snap this thing in. I w there was room in the panel. I wouldn't even even had to remove the GFCI breaker. I could have popped that one in, moved the tails over, and we would have been good to go, uh, but not protected. Uh, and we do, there were some, some GFI outlets available in Gordon's distro, but not all of them, because 
Uh, you're not required to have them, I believe, at least in this district, for um, for your amplifier power, for lighting. You just need them uh, for what's called courtesy power or stage power, and that's where the musicians are going to plug in their equipment. Um, so, you know, we had partial protection, but, you know, if there's a deluge coming, you don't you don't really want to take any chances. So at the risk of pissing some people off, I just I put my tools down. I said, I'm not putting this thing in. I don't want to be that guy. Do you? And Gordon went and got his extension cords, and it was the right thing to do. Um, we, we powered all the amps individually off the GFCI breakers that were available. Fortunately, they had been recently replaced and correctly installed, as opposed to last year when all the grounds were daisy-chained together, causing them all to just nuisance trip on a whim. Um, so he powered his rig up that way, and it was a hassle. We had to chain some cord ends. Uh, we had to, to do a couple... Uh, not unsafe, but unorthodox things, some things you wouldn't normally do. We had to tear the backs off his racks and, and go after things and plug them in. Uh, it was definitely a hassle. It definitely set us back, but it was the right thing to do. It was a safe thing to do. And, uh, you know, when the rain did come, everything snapped, everybody was safe, and water poured into electrical things here, there, and everywhere. And at the end of it, everybody was still vertical. Nobody got so much as a shock or a tingle. And that's what you want. You you really do not want to take chances with electricity. Uh, I don't remember the exact statistic, but uh, the most common electrical shock and and or electrocution instances happen at 120 volts. It's because it's the most common and it's the least respected. Uh, you know, if you're handling a 480 distribution panel or even higher than that, doing hot stick work, that's scary. You can feel the corona. You put your hands in a box, you feel a ha the hair on your arm stand up. Uh, 120 volt, whatever. It's you know, it runs your kid's nightlight, it runs your radio, it runs everything in the house. Uh, it's it's common. It never bites you, uh, except that it's there's plenty enough in that socket to kill you. So if you don't respect it. Um, it can really mess you up. I mean, getting a shock is no fun. Getting dead is even less, and even less fun than that is being the guy responsible for getting another guy dead. So uh, I guess that's all the rambling I'm going to do about electrical matters. But just uh, if you're out there doing outdoor stages or even indoor, just please, please, please don't do stupid things electrically. If you don't understand it, get somebody who does. Uh, don't think because you read a, a Wikipedia article or a, a web page about how electrical panels work and, and distribution, grounding, neutral bus, uh, uh, all of those things. It's in, Unless you've worked in the field or unless you've really studied it, had some kind of training or course, do not mess with that stuff if you don't understand it. Get somebody who does understand it. Have them help you out and have everybody go home alive at the end of the night. All right. So moving on, uh, the other thing that happened this morning was um, I'm standing on stage getting out a couple vocal mics right before it started pouring rain. And I looked up, looked out at the mix, and Gordon and another guy were standing out there. And I said, guys, what day is it? And they said, the ramble, duh. All right, you're on tour time. So that's you know tour time for anybody that doesn't know. That's when you're you're out for a long stretch and you say what what day is it? And the correct answer could be the number day of the month, the word, the day of the week, or just the name of the city or venue that you're in. So what day is it? Philadelphia. Okay, thanks. But uh, see, so yeah, I was having trouble remembering what day it was, and it got me thinking a little bit about just the demands that being in this kind of work put on not just you because. Uh, there, there are a few sweet gigs in this line of work, whether you're in a studio, in a venue, out doing mobile stuff, you know, locally or on tour. It's a lot of time, even if you're a bachelor, it's just a lot of time away from home, um, especially during the busy season, whichever season that is, whether, you know, if it's the theater season or the summer festival season or the winter bar band season or whatever it is, um, you know, it, if you got a family, dad's gone or mom's gone or whoever it is, or, you know, or you're your girlfriend's missing you. And um, people are always a little bit shocked to to find out how much stuff I do outside of, you know, whatever day job I happen to be working. Like today, you know, I, I put in my normal hours at work and I also did a festival stage and I'm also going to go help strike another guy's stage. And that doesn't seem that insane to me, which, you know, nobody's in this business that doesn't really love it. You have to, to, to do crazy stuff like that. And not that it's that crazy. I mean, there's, there's plenty of guys work more insane schedules than we do. But, uh, you know, it just it makes you think a little bit about, you know, in order to support your family or, you know, for whatever reason you do it. I mean, everybody's doing it for the love, but really also for the paycheck. Um, my wife knew getting into it how much time this was going to take. When we were sort of dating and engaged, she saw how much I worked at my day job and how many gigs I was I was gone doing. And, you know, in the summer, there's uh, there have been a lot of summers where I only get two or three honest to goodness days off. And um 
And they're not the holidays either. They're not, you know, Labor Day, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, my birthday. Uh, I'm at a gig. Um, and there's my family's gotten used to that. Um, I've always had to work either the holiday or the day before the holiday if it's a big gig night, you know, the night before Thanksgiving or whatever, or, or New Year's Eve or whatever the case is. Uh, I'm gone. So kids' birthday parties get rescheduled. Uh, you know, taking the wife out for the anniversary, that gets rescheduled. You do it on a night when there's not a gig or there's not work. And, uh, you know, I'm talking to people who are sort of finding their way out of traditional employment and into the weird, wild schedule of professional production. Um, you just got to find those other times. And it's tough if you're working a day job and doing production. But the thing that I've found for my family is, you know, the 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 set up things, you know, for quality time, like the trip to Niagara Falls or the trip to the Science Museum or, you know, going to the planning a, a hike in the the nature reserve or something like that. Like that stuff's all cool. But like the really cool stuff just happens, you know, when I'm home on a random Tuesday, because that's the day off I have that week, you know, just laying around with my family and doing stuff. And, you know, OK, so, you know, Thanksgiving's weird. We have we have dinner on a different day or Christmas is weird because dad got, you know, called into work on an emergency call or something like that. So the the trick is to have that quality time with your family and to have them understand that that quality time isn't going to be, you know, oh, dad's home from work at five. Here's your pipe and your slippers. It's, you know, dad popped in for 15 minutes after work, grabbed three bites of what everybody else was having for dinner, jumped right back in the truck, drove to a gig, came crawling back in at 5 a.m., rolled back out of bed at 7, went back to work, you know, or, or went to the next gig. Or, you know, dad's going on tour six weeks at a stretch or three months at a stretch or a year at a stretch, depending on, on how things go. Um, and a lot of guys that I know with uh, really seem to deal with it pretty well. I mean, you know, your your wife finds friends and things to do and the kids get used to you being gone and it's a shame but uh, really it's it's not unique to our industry i mean you know look at uh you know the the transportation industry truck drivers uh pilots these are guys that are gone for long stretches at a time too and i guess the difference is the quality of life i mean if you if you really enjoy what you're doing i mean for those of us who are out there doing the gigs yeah we have bad ones but even the bad ones turn into good stories i mean there's always a silver lining if you're willing to look for it so um Anyway, no specific point to be made there. Just uh, just rambling on about the life in the industry. And let's see, I have I have one further topic. I think I can actually squeeze out a full half of a podcast here if I uh, talk about one more topic. I'm actually going to put the notebook away because I think I'm going to run out of stuff to say here shortly. Uh, advance wrote a brief post about Advance. I can't remember if it's already up or if it's going to go up, but uh, that'll you'll have to look that up. Advance is uh, basically a, a fairy tale wish list that a band writes about what they want the venue to look like and what the sound system to be like and the, the hired help to be like when they arrive at a venue. And uh, the less lesser known document, uh, far less common, is the tech pack from the venue that gives a, a hyperinflated idea of what they have. <laughs> so, um, and everybody kind of knows, you know, you, if a band or an act is writing out their tech writer, they, it's a, a candy coated wish list. Um, and then, you know, the venue tech gets on, on the horn with the band's manager and say like, all right, you know, I see you asked for a, you know, a PM 5d, I got a Midas legend. Is that cool? Uh, yeah, whatever. Okay. You know, and then you, you see things on there like no Mackie, no PV, no, no Behringer, blah, blah, blah. Then, but you know, you show up to a club and all they have is a, a half broken Mackie 24 channel and the racks full of Behringer stuff. What are you going to do? Um, so anyway, I, in the article, I, I sort of described all how all that stuff goes. Um, really, the thing that would be best suited is if people could just be honest about things. You know, if the band said, listen, here we are. This is what we do. We would like this many inputs. We would like this kind of equipment. Um, but, you know, really, we'll just work with what you got or, uh, you know, let us know so we can bring some of our own stuff along. Or, we'll, you know, really, if, if a band is, is that hot to trot, you know, you should be touring with your own mics if you're a band, because if you think about it, you walk into a club and, you know, whatever mic is on stage might have been, you know, hanging out in some heavy metal guy's armpit or back pocket the night before. And everybody and their cousin that sings there is they spit into it with their nasty beer drinking, cigarette smoking, garlic breath. Uh, just for the germs alone, you should carry your own mic. But uh, thinking in terms of, you know, not everybody can afford to tour with a, a console or something you know, or even an audio guy, but 
if there's something that's particular to to what you do, you know, if if your drummer needs a DI, a good DI for you know some loops or samples or whatever he, he's going to play, you should have one. You should have a decent one because what are the chances you get into some dive club and you're know, like, oh yeah, I got another DI here. If you smack it just right, signal comes out one of them. Um, but anyway, I'm I'm rambling off again. Um, some honesty would be nice because <laughs> you get you get these just crazy requests like oh we require this and we require that and then you get there and it's like whatever and and the venues uh don't do any favors either by saying oh yeah we've got the highest quality this and blah, 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 blah that and we'll do this and we'll that and it turns out you know well yeah we used to have that but you know that guy left and it was his and he took it with him and you know we, we used to have a really good sound guy but now we just got this college kid and you know he'll he'll take care of you whatever uh it's it's a good idea to, it is a good idea to swap paperwork, but really the best thing is just to have a conversation. Um, text, if you're traveling with a band, engineers, if you're, if you're a BE, a band engineer, call the venue. Don't let there be surprises. Find out. You know, ask the guy honestly, like, hey, you know, is your club really set up or are we going to show up and be disgusted? So at least you're not surprised and indignant when you walk in. All right. Okay, so guys, we know, club we're stopping at tomorrow night, the monitor system's terrible, so we're not going to have everything in the kitchen sink and the monitors. We're going we're gonna to do just vocals and maybe a little bit of this and a little that, but we're, we're just going to muddle through and, you know, make it easy to work with the house guy. He knows his monitor system's junk. Don't make him feel bad about it. Work with him. Have the best night you can. So anyway, I'm not going to ramble on too much about that, but just uh, have some honesty when you're advanced and, and politeness. Uh, you know, nobody needs to... Uh, things in this industry aren't fixed by people swaggering around. They're fixed by people, you know, being the slightest bit humble and willing to work. And that's what makes pleasurable events go down. So, uh, wrapping all that stuff up, I'm trying to think here. Yeah, there was a, a couple couple semi-exciting developments. Uh, the blog is, uh, attendance is down a little bit, but we have attracted the notice of some people. Uh, one of them, actually, I mentioned this the last time. I still haven't gotten around to doing any of this stuff, but... Uh, B and H uh, photo videos. Uh, I think they have physical stores, but they're a large online real. T- uh, oh gosh! Hold on, I gotta take this. And we're back. That was Gordon calling up from the stage. Survived intact and uh, no major damages to anything. So that's pretty amazing, considering we went through that tempest today. Uh, so anyway, what was I going? Oh yeah, uh, B and H. Yeah, called up, wanted to drop me a line, and wanted me to our, our site to be an affiliate site, which means uh, we we put their banner ads on the blog, and if somebody clicks on one of those banner ads and then proceeds to actually buy something from the site, we get I don't know four cents or something like that. Um, so <laughs> not super excited. I'm I gotta. It was it was cool to be approached, but uh, you know it's somebody's job to look around for for places to put their stuff, and they they spotted me, which is cool. I mean, we got the profiles being raised slightly enough for somebody like that to take notice. So um, yeah, if I get around to it, I'm gonna actually. You may see some B and H banners in addition to the the Google AdSense stuff up on the site, and uh, not that we're greedy, hungry, money hungry hogs. Uh, we don't expect to get rich on this, but it would actually be cool if uh, if a couple of bucks started rolling in here and there because then we wouldn't have to use free server space and just post stuff on on YouTube and Box.com because they're free. Not that they suck, but uh, there's better ways of doing it. We'd love to have better bandwidth with fewer restrictions. So if a little money comes in from that, then uh, we will do that. And the other thing is, um, shucks, I'm not going to be able to remember this right. Front of House Magazine, specifically Front of House Online, uh, I, the blog, or yeah, our, our blog had started uh, following them on Twitter because uh, we read their page, check in there periodically. And uh, they recently started following us back, took a look at the blog, said, hey, good stuff. Wish you uh, would participate with our stuff. So I took a look at it. Membership was easy. Uh, they have this place called ProAudioSpace.com. It's separate from the uh, the RAG site, the magazine site, and it's uh, yeah, it's like Facebook for uh, for sound guys. Mick Hughes is on there, a couple other uh, heavy hitters, and uh, you set up a little profile, and uh, you can contribute uh, links to articles. It's sort of like Reddit in that respect. You can see, I'll link to this, link to that. Um, but also, they have a, a blog section and a forum section, and uh, they actually have a guy on staff whose job it is to you know, pose further questions to the forums and uh, see what people thought about articles and and sort of provoke thought and discussion, which is kind of cool. We're in the same game over here. And then uh, in the blog section, just anybody that wants to can write a blog and they sort of feature them in the order in which they appeared. And I don't know if they, I actually haven't looked into it a ton. I don't know if they, uh, if they sort of call the herd and um, new stuff. So anyway, what I'm going to do is 
go back and pick out the top 10 posts of all time uh, by number of views and uh, one at a time post those up over at Pro Audio Space, hoping to just draw a little attention our way. And then uh, the best article of the week, I'll probably pop that up there too. So no need, if you are a reader of the blog, no need to worry. You're not going to miss out on content. We're not going to write anything different uh, for them unless they ask us to. Um, so yeah, there's that. Oh yeah, the other cool thing about uh, uh, B&H is uh, there, there is the possibility to get uh, demo merchandise. I don't know, it's probably not to keep. I, I don't know. I don't know how free they are with that yet. I haven't actually looked into that. But it would be cool. Uh, you know, we try to to go through some, at least the stuff that we're looking at and investing in. Uh, powered speakers have been the the topic du jour lately. Um, but yeah, it, it'd be cool to, I don't know, play with interfaces or microphones or whatever they've got that. Uh, they want to send over to play with. So there may be some some actual real industry test driving going over here if we catch their interest and if they like us and if we're pretty and we smell nice, which we're not. So, uh, all right, we are uh, we crossed the half hour mark. I've been rambling for 30 plus minutes. Hope it was at least somewhat interesting to you. I'm not going to bore you any further because uh, an hour of audio nerd speak is only so interesting. And that's when I have a couple of people to offset me and back me up. But I also have a tendency to to run my jaw even when I have a room full of guys. So maybe I got that out of my system a little bit. But at any rate, uh, as always, we would like to thank you for listening and thank you for reading. Thank you to all the people across the United States and around the world who log in. And uh, we, we appreciate your attention, and we would encourage you to uh, up the game a little bit and participate. Uh, the comment section is always open here uh, where we post uh, we post this on YouTube. I don't know if you can comment on, on the box.com post if you're streaming or downloading the MP3s. Uh, maybe you can. Um, but, yeah, we, we would love it if you would comment, even if it's just uh, to tell us you think we're fools. Uh, that would at least be some discussion. I, I, and I realize that people aren't used to... Uh, you know, reading an article about pro audio stuff and then having there be a comment section. Or if there is a comment section, thinking like, well, it's, it'd be useless to post anything. I'd just be spitting in the ocean. Um, we're still a pretty small operation here. Uh, you know, at best, we're getting a couple thousand hits a month over a whole month. So there's really not a huge audience out there listening, those of you that are. Um, so anyway, we're glad to have you, and uh, we would invite you to sort of get in on the ground floor. Um, we would love... Ideas for posts, questions for us to answer. Uh, if you'd like to seek our opinion about something, uh, not that we want to be like uh, dear SNR, don't ask relationship questions or anything, real estate, stuff like that. But uh, if you want to know uh, a couple of mics that would be good to buy if you're starting out or if you're moving from one branch of the biz into another one, um, our crew up here is pretty diverse, you know, ranging from... DJ karaoke guys, rock guys, theater guys, live sound, recording, church, corporate, lighting. Uh, we, we're pretty well diversified, so we, we would at least take a stab at answering your questions. And also, here's the big one. Um, if you've got a, a topic and you have a, a – uh, doesn't even have to be well written. I mean, just, just uh, if you've got something you'd, you'd like to write about, it, it can be a rant. It can be an opinion. It can be uh, a technique that you have for, for doing something that's maybe a little unique or maybe a, a little bit of a change-up of something that the rest of the industry does. Uh, really, the sky's the limit. Um, we would just be thrilled to have your submissions. Uh, there's not really any restrictions uh, other than language a little bit. Um, so, like, you know, if you drop a million F-bombs, we're, we'll probably would, would uh, edit those out or make it like F asterisk 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 um, just to keep things a little bit clean. But, uh, yeah, absolutely. If you've, if you've got something, uh, an idea rolling around in your head, even if you're not a very good writer, we would, we would love to have your writing. There's no restriction on length. It can be as long or short as you want. If it's too long, we'll divide it up into parts and spread it out, spread out the goodness, make them wait. And, all right, I think that's about it. Oh, also, yeah, if, you, uh, if you'd like to get in on our roundtable, uh, even if you don't have anything to say, if you want to just come hang out with us and, and listen to us geek out about sound stuff, uh, you would be more than welcome. We, we meet in the uh, Buffalo, New York area, so if you're from... I don't know, it's not too hard to get here from about anywhere in western New York, and uh, we could we could make it worth your while. We could uh, hang out, chill out a little bit, get a bite to eat afterward or something like that. Uh, or if you are listening remotely, even overseas, uh, we have had relatively good luck with Skype, having people Skype in and uh, doing some interviews. And uh, all right, so that's it. We uh, I've spent almost as much time encouraging people to participate as I did talking about actual audio stuff. Oh, but yeah, the other thing, um, if you're if you have stuff you would love to say, please, um, you can go back and find previous examples on articles where I've I've slipped up or said something incorrectly or done my math wrong or something. 
Um, if I'm wrong and you know it, or we're wrong, uh, anything we, we say or write, please let us know. We would love to be corrected. We would love to be thinking and knowing the right things. And if we think and know the wrong things, we, we need to get straightened out on that just like anybody else would. Um, so uh, there will be no points deducted for putting corrections in, in the comments. And also, uh, if you're worried about trolls, we're just not going to put up with that crap. Um, we're here to, to talk about our business and to make it better and to get along. So if, if things turn into a flame war, we're just going to shut that down. We, we watch stuff pretty closely. We're not going to put up with malicious talk or nasty behavior. So, uh, you know, if you're a noob and you're a little nervous about, uh, going in front of some dogs who are a little bit, not, not that we're big dogs, but bigger dogs than, than somebody just getting started. Uh, we would love to talk to you. We, if you approach the city gig, we would love to talk to you there too. We, <laughs> we're, we're not in the spotlight. Nobody's really interested in us a lot of times. So if you are interested, if you have stuff you want to know, get in touch. All right. That was, gosh, almost 10 full minutes of that nonsense. So anyway, sorry uh, if that was kind of a dull podcast, but uh, we did want to try and keep up with the schedule whenever possible. Uh, we actually, I think we had our first down day on the on the blog the other day. I think Friday was the first day there was no article. Uh, and that was that was my bad. It was Friday is Carl's day to post, and I, I didn't manage to check with him this week to make sure he was going to have something. So uh, my... His article went missing, and it was my bad for not filling in with something else. But that was a pretty good streak. I think we got close to 160 days in a row with no interruption in content. So I'm pretty proud of that. And